The do's and don'ts of a job interview. Sunday, Anki. Today, our champion, Dave Dupuy of Leicester, Massachusetts, faces the challenge of Phil Harris of Dorchester, Massachusetts on Candlepin Bowling. <laughs> Welcome to Candleton Bowling. I'm Don Gillis, and speaking for the whole crew, I'm glad you could join us here at the Fairway in Natick, Massachusetts, for three strings of Candleton Bowling. Total pinfall determines our winner. Each of them takes home a permanent souvenir. These trophies are provided by Week's Trophy of Lynn. We also have guaranteed prize money. Nobody's going to go away without having something in his pocket. We have $1,200 guaranteed. $700 goes to the winner. $350 goes to the runner-up. $50 available to the winner of each string, and obviously, if they tie a string, then we split that at $25 apiece. Many other opportunities for our bowlers, you know, about uh, an extra 100 for a 400 series, three marks in a row, $50, each successive mark, $50 apiece, as long as they can keep it going in the same string, for three strikes in a row, an additional bonus of $1,000, and we have our marksman of the day, the man with the most marks, and that would be a $50 gift certificate. Uh, for, from Rotman's Furniture and Carpet Store of Worcester, Massachusetts, which is not too far away from where Dave Dupuis lives and uh, where he won one last week. Okay, let's talk to today's bowler, shall we? <laughs> Phil, welcome. I know I was teasing you ahead of time. Uh, uh, how many people are corny enough as me and ask you about things about Phil Harris, about, you know, like uh, starring in movies? And a lot of people have asked me that. Yes, yeah, but obviously no relation, huh? No, no. Okay, uh, let's see what, 117 your average is before at the yeah. present time, and you're up there in one of those 191s and 486, had a pretty good roll-off too, huh? Yeah, 685. A lot of guys in that roll-off? Yeah, about 50, 60 guys. Boy, it's tough, isn't it, when, yeah. when you're the only one who can win it? Yeah. In 16 years. Is that right, that long? Boy, I'm, I'm glad for you. Uh, see, he's a veteran now. He was on yeah. before, and also he's <laughs> he's got a win, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I'm going to say it'll be a good match, I hope. Yeah, I hope so, too. And both of you have a good rooting section here, so uh, it should be a good one. Uh, gonna, I haven't seen you. I didn't watch you. Do you fire the ball like this guy? Are you one of those fireballers? Oh, yeah, something like that. that. That could be fun. We like to see those pins fly. Good luck to both of you. Okay, we'll get underway right after this. Candlepin Bowling is sponsored in part by Cotter True Value, the You Can Do It hardware store. Here's our challenger, Phil Harris of Dorchester, making his first appearance. That's the way to start. That's the way to do it. As I alluded to his average, 117. 16 years of trying, first ball he fires is a strike. First ball, next and six. Ralph Stewart goes down to pick up a loose pin. And now he'll be trying to make it two marks in a row. All right, so the total fill will be eight, and he is left with the three and the seven. And he gets a good 10. Here's our defending champion, Dave Dupuy of Leicester, Massachusetts. His league average, 126. All right, Dave is looking now at a five, seven, eight. Piece of wood to the left of the five and one to the right. Nope. All right, for Dave Dupuis, it is an eight.
four horsemen left side and uh, the tupper of the two pins to pick up if he's going to pick up one on the right he's got the nine pin he'd much prefer it to be the ten nope just a little bit too full so he punched out the two pin it's an eight Now, our challenger, Phil Harris. He is employed as a painter. Two full. He punched out three. He chopped wood with another one. It's a nine. In addition to his 117 average, Phil has a high single of 191. His high triple is 486. He's representing the Lucky Strike Lanes of Dorchester, and in the roll-off, as he mentioned, he had a 685. Six after four. Now Dave Dupuy, our defending champion. He won his title last week, defeating Ed Zernike. Four horsemen left side. Nice spare. Bonus. Big Phil. Got nine and probably would have had a strike except that two pieces of wood fell. One in back of and one in front of the two pin and held it up. So he makes it for a spare. All right, with the bonus ball still to be thrown by our defending champion, Dave Dupuy. The score right now in pins that are already down. Harris 46, Dupuy 45. Okay, rolling now in the fifth box of the first string, our challenger, Phil Harris, Dorchester. All but one pin. The seven pin did not go down. He has a piece of wood right up against it. leaving four horsemen on the left and the opposite corner of the 10. Everything went except the four pin. The 10. Defending champion Dave Dupuy. Two marks in a row. A third, of course, would give him $50 in bonus money. Big Phil. Everything down except the seven. That's it. $50 in bonus money. Three marks in a row. Six. 
seven, leaving five, nine, and ten, and a couple of wood. Oh, man! A spinning piece of wood went by that standing nine. The ball went by it, but it's still standing. It's a ten. As usual, Al Giglio keeping score on the electronic scoreboard. Keith Williams keeping score for the big board for the folks who are here. A strike for our challenger, Phil Harris. First ball nets him five. No wood to help. He's looking at two, four, seven on the left, six and ten on the right. That's the left side. Tonight. There's our lob line judge and referee, Ralph Stewart, sitting right at the lob line, as you can see. Don Riley is our statistician and coordinator. Bill Rubin, of course, is our producer and director. Five pins still standing. Our crew today, Skip Peabody, Bob Armitage, Howie Rouse, Jeff Sullivan. <laughs> Two pins still standing, the nine and the ten, and a piece of wood in a good spot that's right between them. But there's another that's perpendicular, which could act as a roadblock if he doesn't get it just right. He got it. Now Phil Harris, today's challenger. Two full spread eagle. No wood to help. Two, four, seven, three, six, ten. That's the left side. He left the three pin. That one went off to the right a little bit, but he fires the ball with enough on it so that uh, he mixes them up pretty well, even if he doesn't hit the head pin. One, two, four, and eight. And the eight did not go. So the best he can do is his average, which is 117. And it'll be a 116. Working on a spare now, Dave Dupuy. Six is the fill. He's looking at the one, two, four, and ten. One, two, four alone. The ten has wood in front of it. Wow, he got the 10, he got the 1, he got the 2, but the 4 is still standing. It's a 10. All right, $50 in bonus money goes to Dave Dupuy. An additional 50, I should say. He had three marks in a row, and now he will be the winner of the first string and picks up another 50.
third ball coming up, two pins standing, one and seven. Just waiting for some wood to settle down. It's a nine. Interesting that his league average is 126, and that's what he rolled. Bill Harris's uh, league average is 117. He rolled a 116. Okay, so $50 in bonus money additional goes to our defending champion, Dave Dupuy, who wins the first string 126 to 116. Middle string means our defending champion leads it off. Here he is. Dave Dupree of Leicester, Massachusetts. One, two, four, eight. Those are the pins standing. That one, he just let go of it too soon. It never had a chance to come back. All it got was the head pin. It's a 10. On right side, one, three, six, ten. Yes, spare. Looking right now at four and eight to convert for a spare. Ooh, missed it on the left side. Began to tumble, but not all of them. He still has one and ten, but he has a lot of wood in between one and ten. Well, two of them are settling in a good spot. So he should be able to make this. Yes. All right, each bowler has begun the middle string with a ten and a spare. I have a note here, some folks are a Belmont family and they're having a family argument and so I'm supposed to settle it. Well, basically, they want to know if I have a brother who's in the audience here and that is supposedly here every week. No, I do have a brother, but he is not in the audience, never has been in the audience, lives most of the time in Houston, but now is temporarily working in Baltimore. And the man who apparently you're assuming is my brother, he said, looks a little bit like me, but somewhat older. Nice shot. Yes, it's another sh a strike. No, my brother's my kid brother. He's eight years younger than I am. OK, Phil Harris on the line. He is working on his spear. Ooh, so close to a hammer. He left the nine pin only. He has it. Okay. 
He has two-thirds of the way towards $50 in bonus money. Dave Dupuy has already done that. He's got a great chance to do it. Eight-pin drop. Two pins to convert. The two-pin and the five-pin. Yes! So Phil Harris picks up his first bonus money for three marks in a row. And again, we take a pause at the end of four boxes, as we do in the first and in the third. So with two bonus balls still to be thrown by Dave Dupuy, one bonus ball to be thrown by Phil Harris, in pins down, right now they are tied at the beginning of this second string at 57 each. All right, here's our defending champion, Dave Dupuy. He has three marks in a row. That established the bonus of $50 in this string. Now each consecutive mark is worth $50. Let's see if he can keep it going. Well, he's going to have to do a little work because right now he's got five down with the first ball. And uh, in order to convert this, he needs four horsemen left side plus the five pin. Nope. Okay, so the total is eight for the fill. And the bonus stops at three in a row. Had to wait to see whether the head pin was going to fall or not. A piece of wood rolled up against it. It rocked back and forth. He is left with six pins to work against. Uh, the four horsemen right side, piece of wood right behind number one, and he also has the seven and eight. Had to hit the head pin and didn't. So he has left one and eight. All right, a pair of nines. Now let's see whether Phil Harris can keep his streak going. He has three marks in a row and has established the bonus of 50. All right, seven is the fill, and he's got a triangle on the left. It's the two, the four, and the five. Too bad, he missed the two pin, took out the four, and his bonus streak stops at three. He also gets a nine. Now it's that triangle on the left plus the seven. In other words, two, four, five, seven. Yes. Our defending champion, Dave Dupuy. He got a break. Six and ten just tumbled. Now he's left with two and four. Oh, he hated to miss that one. He took the two but didn't get the four. The old Woolworth split, the five and ten. No wood. Mm, oh, that was so <laughs> close. Wow. Must have missed it by all of a quarter of an inch. Now to the other side. So it's an eight. All right, Phil Harris. Trailing by 11, but remember he has a, a spare, and this is the fill.
It's six. He gets diamond left, but he gets a very nice piece of wood that's curled right alongside the two and the five. Yes. Our challenger has five marks in the last six boxes. No wood to help. This is going to be tough because he has the four, seven, nine, and ten. Too far left. It's an eight. So our challenger now in the lead by two pins as we go to the final two boxes of the middle string. Dave Dupuis is looking at the one, two, four, eight, and then over on the right, the ten pin couple of pieces of wood in between the cluster of four and the ten pin. Let's see what happens. He got it. Got a big eight fill and a lucky break in the sense that he has the three and the six to convert and he has a piece of wood right across them. He does not miss that opportunity. Got eight more. Fine, 137. Our challenger, Phil Harris of Dorchester, and he comes back with a hammer. ball gets him five, leaves him with one, two, seven, nine, and ten. The wood is up against the seven. Total of the fill, seven. In the box, eight. We got a good one going. And by one pin, by one pin, our challenger, Phil Harris, picks up $50 in bonus money for winning the middle string 138 to 137. However, our defending champion, Dave Dupuis, is still leading by nine pins, 263 to 254. Just nine pins separating our bowlers. Here is our challenger, Phil Harris of Dorchester, as he begins the third string. One, three, five, nine, and ten. Wood be in front of the nine and the ten. But the ten didn't go. Waiting for wood to settle down. All right, a ten. Yeah. 
So close to a hammer, he left the kingpin. That's number five. He has it. Bear in the second. Our defending champion, Dave Dupuy, looking at one, two, seven, eight, nine. Two pieces of wood. And he made it. So he begins the third string with a spare. Six is the fill. The only piece of uh, felled wood is to the right of the six pin. Uh, and over on the left, you have the two, four, and seven, which is what he goes for. Oh, what a great try. He got the two, four, seven. He kicked that two pin across, but it came basically where the three would be. It came completely laterally. So it did not catch the six. He's got it now for 10. Now our challenger is working on his spare. I probably don't have to say anything. Yes, it was a hammer. Eight on the first ball and an excellent opportunity to make it three in a row. He has wood right across the two standing pins, which are the six and the ten. And yes! All right, Dave Dupuy now the defending champion. He also has a perfect spare leave. The two and the four with wood right across. And he makes it. Nine was the fill on that one. He's got to be careful now because he's looking at the eight pin. He's got a piece of, actually two pieces of wood just to the right. And can he, yes. That's the only way he could make that. All right, Phil Harris has three marks in a row, $50 in bonus money. Now each subsequent consecutive mark in this third string is worth $50 a piece as long as he can keep it going. Two full on the head pin. Four is the fill. Three, six, ten on the right. Two, four, and eight on the left. Good try, I'll tell you. He went back door. In fact, the four pin is still rocking, and he's hoping it would tumble into the two. It darn near did. All right, ten. The bonus streak stops right there, but he's still pinning very well. He's got the, the three, then across the back, the seven, nine, and ten. Three pieces of wood just to the left of the three pin. Through six boxes, he has an excellent string going. He's knocked out every pin in every box. Two tens, four spares, excuse me, three spares and a strike. All right, now Dave Dupuy trying to make it three in a row. And 
Dave gets a seven as the fill on his spear. He will now have to, without help from any wood, make the one, three, six. And missed the head pin. That hurt. That hurt. Nine. Six pins and that's his lead and he's opposite a spear by his challenger. Now he has four horsemen right side. Ralph Stewart calls time because there's a piece of wood which is probably going to go and yes it goes into the gutter on the left side. So Ralph gets it out of there. Now the four horsemen on the right side are all by themselves. Oh, looked like a perfect hit. He hit the one three pocket, got the one three six, but the 10 still there. Now, anything over six on this fill will put our challenger in the lead. That's it by one. What he's looking at, four, five, and seven. Got the four. Five and seven still there. Nine. One pin lead for the challenger. Bill Harris firing now on lane three. Three six on the right, four seven on the left. One piece of wood perpendicular to the pit and rocking back and forth right about where the five would be. that beautifully. Beautiful shot. He has taken the lead by one. He has fired a nine box and a spear. That is what Dave Dupuy, our defending champion, is looking at. And he comes up with a spread eagle. Chopped wood again. That time punching out just the six pin. Now he'll go for the two, four, seven over on the left. It was a good out. So it remains one pin lead for our challenger through 27 boxes. Now we have a spare in the eighth of the third string. All right, Dave Dupuis got a break. He's looking at the three, six, and 10 to convert for a spare. He did not get it. Whether or not that's going to make a difference or not for him winning two in a row. We now have, of course, for, uh, for three in a row, when a, when a bowler wins three in a row, he will receive the Rotman Shays, a luxurious velvet recliner from Brookline. And when I draw the home viewer card, when a bowler has won three in a row on that particular day, the home viewer, instead of being guaranteed a prize from Parker Penn, will instead be getting also a Brookline recliner from Rotman's. Rotmans of Worcester. Five pin lead. He's rolled a 10, and now what's he gonna roll in the final box? 
All right, a triangle to work on. This is made up of the two, four, and five. Did not get it as he took out the five. That has left the door ajar for our defending champion. All right, a 10 and a fine 134. Okay, 25 pins needed by Dave Dupuy to tie 26 to win in two boxes. Half Worcester, left side. He chopped wood again. Half Worcester left, now a half Worcester right. Now he needs nine. He has to mark and get at least nine, and it won't be easy if he has to mark, and he would need an eight fill on the mark in order to tie, a nine in order to win. He's looking right now at the two, four, six, and 10. A very, very tough shot to convert. No, he doesn't have it. So Phil Harris is our new champion. <laughs> Phil Harris in his first appearance, and that doesn't happen that often. He wins it by 10 pins, final score, is Harris 388, Dupuy 378. All right, we have $300 in the home viewer jackpot. You know how this works. I'm gonna draw a card, and uh, if it's anywhere near the total that is within 10 either side of that total, that person will receive whatever is in the jackpot, which, as I just told you, is $300. If it's uh, nowhere near that, that person will at least be rewarded with a handsome gift from the Parker Pen Company, and we'll just add $50 and keep doing that until someone does walk away with it. And when we do have a winner, we empty this barrel out completely, which makes it a lot easier for me to turn, but uh, also, of course, uh, it uh, means that you don't get too much money because we start all over again at 50 when there are just a few in here. All right, let's find out. What is the total today? It is 766, both bowlers combined, so anywhere from 756 to 776 would win the $300. All right, enough of that. Let's go with this side for a change. Ah. That one must have been a winner. It didn't want to come out. All right, let's find out. We're looking for a 766, and uh, this one comes from South Boston on Fifth Street. Mrs. Lorraine A. Russell, 766. I guess 760 would be a winner, wouldn't it? Yeah. How about that? Okay, $300 to Mrs. Lorraine Russell of West Fifth Street in South Boston. Fine. Now, we have a high-low jackpot. It's been going on week after week after week. It's up to $1,575. You get first chance at it, Phil. Can you come? Okay, Bill, right behind, right behind him. Where did I get untangled here? Okay, David. There always has to come one of these. I know you yeah. wish it would be a little bit later before you got it. Yeah. $350 plus uh, $150 in bonus money. And you had something you wanted to say while you were here today. Yeah, I forget I to remind you. I just want to say hello to Frankie P for me. Okay, fine. And uh, listen, come back and see us again soon, will you? Hope so. All right. Well, great. 
Next time on, and you win. What a nice feeling, huh? Feels good. Especially after trying for 16 years, huh? Long time. Boy, you do fire the ball, I'll tell you. So uh, I'm not surprised. Maybe I'm a little surprised that your average is only 117. I would think that the way you bowl today, it should I was be up, up there and it was down. Okay. You have uh, $700 for winning, $200 in bonus money, the handsome trophy from Weeks Trophy Company, and also a gift certificate for being our March of the Day, $50 gift certificate from Rotman's Furniture and Carpet Store of Worcester. Nice to see you. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye, everybody.